Just, just keep going. Reverse, <laughs> rewind. Okay, ready, go. Action. Well, I, was, I was just saying, I feel, like, I feel like I focused on covering the material too much instead of getting us to talk and have us actually apply it. Because there's a lot there, and I could have gone on for a lot longer. I realized that I do like to hear myself speak, and it's fun. But the real learning comes in when we get people together and we're all talking together, campfire setting. That's it. See, I think that's the thing, though. Um, you say well, you say attend a facilitation on a topic, uh, one one that we like and stuff like that. I'm defaulting back to every single presentation I've ever done. And, and that's, that's the key here, is not to do that. To realize, oh snap, I just, I reverted, I, I defaulted back to that. Where now I'm being like, okay, I can change my presentations. I can change every single time I'm up in front of people and I have material. I can change every single one from here on out to be a more of a facilitation instead of, I've got material I need to cover, I've got a nice, like, showy presentation I can go through. But that's all I do is I cover material, I go through the presentation, and that's it. Where, where the, the learning may have happened with kind of the interest in the material. I think I did that very well. Is I had something that was very engaging, and people were sucked in because of that. But I could have done so much better. I mean, it's... There's always a time for that kind of presentation. I mean, you s do real estate, you're not going to go to a person and, and facilitate all these different ideas and different things. Like, no, you're going to have a presentation. You're going to go this, 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 and this, and you're going to get through your presentation. And that's perfect in that situation. But when you're in a classroom, when you're with somebody that you're trying to mentor, you're not going to treat them the same way that you're going to treat a presentation. Yeah. We're also our worst critics. Mm -hmm. So honestly, with that, I feel like maybe we should have watched somebody else's video instead of our own. Mm -hmm. We're going to do that as well. But, um, <laughs> but <laughs> just, just well, I'm just saying too, like we're always going to be our worst critics. <clears throat> oh, I could have done that better. I could have done that better. Oh my gosh, why did I even do that? Like, you know, we're going to sit there and take it one one piece at a time and we're just gonna rip it to shreds because that's just who we are as individuals like everybody is just so hard on themselves mm -hmm. um, but what I, I have to say is that always a bad thing that we are gonna analyze it is there learning no, that can come from that there is learning that can come from it but there is also a lot of negative Um, going back to the presentation thing, um, I, I believe that even when you have to present material, you can still do it in a facilitative manner. Um, for example, <clears throat> doing large group sessions, you know, 300, 400, 500 people, even been in a couple where there's been, you know, where the setting was right, even like a thousand or more, um, where you can uh, do a think pair share and say, okay, based on what we've talked about here, turn to your neighbor and discuss what this means to you. And immediately, you have facilitated potentially and hopefully increased or enhanced learning um, where it, ga it engages them at a higher cognitive level than just hearing it, uh, where they actually maybe have to apply some of it in their own personal framework. Does anybody have any other comments on this idea? So one thing, it's there's lots of other things in the in the book that they talk about, um, but there are things that I feel like we've already covered from previous things, like being honest, um, being authentic. That's, that's why we, and I think that's why Darren lets everybody choose what they want to do their 10 minute facilitation on. Is because then you get to find something that you're passionate about. Which, 
is easily seen. But <clears throat> how would you facilitate something that maybe you don't care a whole lot about? Well, we do it all the time. And like classes, or you just present that, uh, sorry, English. When you have to uh, <laughs> present, thank you. <laughs> when you have to present like on health or like uh, just anything really, you do it all the time. And ba basically, what I do is I try and just gather all the information necessary, um, and then I'll pick the cool things out of that, or what I deem cool. Because there's always going to be cool things in anything you find, or even just rel relatively speaking, like this is the coolest out of out of what I'm seeing. And then you take that focus on it, and you can you can bring passion to anything. You can you can breathe life into anything that you choose to, and you just have to, you just have to go for it and just try to be excited and try and help other people see see even if you don't think it's exciting, see how they can find it exciting. Like, my, my default is mathematics. I understand mathematics is amazing, and it, it really is cool. My, my skills aren't up there yet to appreciate it, because I'm not a master of it, so I just, I just focus on what I'm good at, which isn't mathematics. Um, but I understand how great it is, so if I were to give a presentation on mathematics, I, I, I'd probably focus on the applications, on how, how cool it is. Look at all this cool stuff you can do. It's necessary, it's like a building block, it's like the scientific language. Um, I, just, I just focus on that sort of stuff. Right. And that's that's exactly it. Find something that you do think is cool about. You want to say something? Just along those lines, I don't think I've ever presented or written a paper or did anything that was in kind of a presentation mode that I didn't actually have passion about because, like Bryce says, you find the passion, you find something, you naturally go towards something you find an interest in. And it may take, I've, I've had ones that took forever to figure out, okay, what do I like about this subject? math would be a, a very difficult, but I think it's the exact same thing, application based. Um, English is all about like great inventors and stuff like that. We, I think we tend to actually do that. We, we find where our passion is in relation to whatever we've been given. Okay, so are we all going to be better facilitators? <laughs> now, that, now that we've we come to Dean and figure out, okay, what is a good facilitator? What do I do, and how can I not default? I think that's one of the big things, is really analyzing ourselves and saying, okay, I'm defaulting, knowing when and knowing how to cut out. Any other comments or questions? I would say that um, it really does go back to, you know, what do we want to accomplish? What do we want the students to be able to do? And it might be a progressive thing, we might have to do a little more teaching to, it, to provide them information so that they have the, the tools or the building blocks from which to, to work or with which to work um, and to be able to apply. And so it, it, it is often a progressive thing, but you can still mix in facilitative or facilitating uh, techniques as you quote unquote present information <clears throat> but a lot of it is the mindset of is this student centered or is it teacher centered I think that's probably half the battle at least that's been my experience is that when I focus on on student centered learning it tends to be much more of a facilitating experience they kind of go hand in hand just inherently I think Here's a question that I, I think is, is relevant. So let's say you're in a class where the teacher, the professor, is doing a lot of lecturing. What might you do, not that you want to derail him or her, but what might you do to try to make it more engaging? Have any of you tried to do that before, like on purpose? So, <laughs> in math class last semester. So what did you do? I always asked him questions. I always made because um, it wasn't it wasn't like I was meaning to. It's just I know I know that there were actually a couple of kids in the class that were getting behind, and I would always just be like, oh, so you do it this way? And he'd be like, well, no, let's do it again a different way. And then like I he'd reteach it a different way, and then he. So there were like three different ways that he taught it, so all of us could understand it. Awesome. That, that's, that's a he good way to do it. He was actually a really good math teacher. Huh? 
Thurman Smith. He was he and he's super like he's super awesome with people asking questions, making sure that he's actually teaching the material that the students are actually getting it. There there I haven't really met a math teacher that was a that was anything like him. That's good. And so it was nice to be in a math class that he was just like, Oh, you guys do you want me to go over it again? We can do something different, like let's do a couple of things on the board before we go on to the you know, the next problem. So it was really fun. I think in a math class that would be really good, or if there's some type of problem solving, like steps in problem solving to say, are there other ways to do this? Are there other ways that people might typically do this? Because I have seen that that's been the case when the mentor's in the classroom and they actually get to teach, and they teach it a different way uh, than, the, than the professor does. Students are like, oh, now I get it. So that, that's a great way to do it. What else have you guys tried, or, or what, what do you think might happen if you do attempt that. Yeah, go ahead. I feel kind of bad picking on the math department. Um, but <laughs> Don't. <laughs> I, I'm in it, Mike. <laughs> I do it all the time. I had a, a math teacher. Well, OK, so this is my story. Um, and you're sticking to it. <laughs> all right, so let's see. Once upon time. Fall, yeah, once upon time, fall semester last year, took a math class. And I tried my hardest. I tried, but I, I thought I failed the class. And I was, I was just so upset, so distraught myself. The, the professor's really, really smart guy. Doesn't really know how to teach very well. Um, he, he, he just, he just kind of goes. And like, so like I, I forced myself, like I, I sat towards the back, this is the auditorium class. I sat towards the back of the class. Like I don't show 